Welcome to the Wild Grown Wisdom Podcast with your host, Vinita Mohan. In this episode, we explore what lies behind our positive intention for our loved one's happiness. Are we truly willing to pay the price for their authentic happiness? You may be surprised by what you find. Whenever we are asked about what it is that we want most for our children, we immediately say, all I want is for my child to be happy. We say the same thing about all our loved ones, siblings, friends, parents. However, when we do a postmortem on the anatomy of this intention for our loved ones, a couple of interesting factors arise. First of all, Is it possible to be happy all the time? The famous researcher on flow experiences, Mihai Cheeks and Mihai, asserts that the closest feeling to happiness is a benign, pleasant state. So what do we mean when we say we want our loved ones, especially our children, to be happy? Are we talking about a benign, pleasant state? Or are we talking about them achieving and getting everything they want life working out according to our script for them, never facing discomfort or disappointment, and most loaded of all, getting everything they deserve. For the longest time, I associated being happy with being successful. In my book, sadness was for losers. Being successful means being happy all the time in all aspects of life. Or that's what I thought. That was a script for ulcers, for sure. One day, both me and my best friend had the same aha moment. Yes, when you are best friends for over 40 years, not only do you align your menstrual cycles, you also align breakthrough moments together. We both realized that, A, it's not possible to be happy all the time, and B, there is nothing wrong with sadness. Furthermore, we need to break the association between happiness and success. One has nothing to do with the other. Life, just like our bodies, is a wave. There will be ups and downs. Life is not one straight line trending upwards all the time. Wall Street would have us believe that this is the only reality for successful humans and organizations. But that is unreal and a recipe for constant disappointment and a low-grade frustration with life all the time. The second realization that I had from the postmortem on this intention is a much more sobering one. We want our children, parents, siblings, friends, et al. to be happy as long as their happiness isn't an inconvenience for us or causes us any discomfort. For instance, if we say we want our children to be happy, then what happens if they disappoint us with their grades or choosing a field of study that we have dismissed is for losers or they marry someone we don't approve of or their political, sexual, gender, religious orientations are dramatically different from ours? Then are we still holding our intention for their happiness and saying, All I want for them is to be happy? Or is it bringing out rage, frustration, tears, bitterness? Because now we are having to readjust our life, views, opinions, beliefs, rituals, theories to accommodate for their choices. I've also seen this play out with children, especially adult children and parents. When a parent's marriage fails, children often take that failure personally. They expect their parents to be successful in their careers, happy in their marriages, make the kids their top priority, and also have enough money for college, vacation, and housing funds. However, if in that journey, should the parent choose to end a marriage, find new love, change careers, change sexual orientation, the children are up in arms because, again, it causes them inconvenience. I once knew of an adult woman in her 30s who was babysitting her middle-aged widower dad for almost two years to make sure he didn't remarry his new love. 
Yep, we will do anything to ensure our homeostasis. So, what do we really mean when we say all we want is for our loved ones to be happy? At what personal cost to us will we be okay with that bargain? What level of discomfort and inconvenience are we willing to bear and explore in order to support another's happiness? Let's reality check that. So, the next time we say we want another's happiness, perhaps we will pause and reflect on what our true intentions are and what price we are willing to pay for our loved one's happiness. You may be surprised by what you discover. Thanks for listening to this episode of The Wild Grown Wisdom with your host, Vinita Mohan. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist from the Bay Area, California, specializing in trauma and attachment repair. I'm also a certified EMDR specialist and a certified shamanic practitioner. In this podcast series, we delve into the journey of our spiritual essence, having a human experience. While many social scientists study human emotions, thoughts, and behaviors, and others explore transcendental experiences, few bridge the gap to help embody the spiritual wisdom in everyday life. I call this the psycho-spiritual path. Through this podcast, I hope to share bite-sized practical insights for navigating life as an empowered sovereign being. If you found this episode valuable, We'd greatly appreciate your support. Please consider rating, reviewing, commenting, and subscribing on your podcast platform to help us reach a wider audience. You can explore more of my writings on Medium by following the link in the show notes. We'd also love to hear about your experience, so feel free to share your thoughts with us at Wild Throne Wisdom Podcast at gmail.com. Thank you for being part of our journey. Please be advised, the information provided in the Wild Throne Wisdom Podcast is intended for general information purposes only. Vinita Mohan is a licensed therapist and healer. However, the content shared in this podcast does not replace or constitute professional advice, therapy, or counseling. It is essential to consult with a qualified mental health professional for personalized guidance regarding your unique circumstances. Thank you.